This is a really easy question for me because I have only one thing on my mind as I'm going through the, the entire SAT, plug points into equations, right? So I see that I have some percentages here and that instantly makes me think about two formulas, right? The open formula for regular percentages and then the open formula when we have an increase or decrease in the percentages. So I haven't even read the problem yet. I just see there's percentages involved. So I know I'm probably gonna use one of those two things. Now, in order to use them, I need to be able to fill in all these variables, right? So the P is the percentage. It looks like I've got that. But then the O and the N, those are going to be the original values, the new values. And if I read, I can see that I'm, I'm kind of given those things, but not really, right? The positive number A is 2,241% of the sum of the positive numbers B and C, and B is 83% of C. What percent of A is B? Or what percent of B is A? Wow, see, it matters. It matters what that order is. So... In a way, I could plug A, B, and C into these formulas and start to make some sense of it, but my other instinct is like, well, if, if A, B, and C don't seem to matter, then why don't I just make up a number and try to see if I can work through the question without having to deal with all the confusing variables, right? Let's just see it as numbers. And I'm looking for a weak spot, right? I'm looking for a place where I can kind of get two numbers to be related in a very intuitive way. So Choice A, or the letter A, is very messy, right? The number A is 2,241% of the sum of the positive numbers B and C. That is a very confusing idea, right? I, I can, I'm going to work with it later, but right now that's very confusing because it involves all three pieces. But the second part of this question, let me highlight it, is actually really simple. B is 83% of C. Well, with percentages, 100 really works out nicely. So how about 83 is 83% of 100. And just like that, this question is much, much simpler, right? Now we're just gonna be calculating A based on actual values, right? So I'm making this up. I could make up any numbers for B and C as long as the value I choose for B is 83% of the value I choose for C. But why make your life harder? 100 is a really nice number because we can do some of the percentages in our head. Now I can follow my instruction in the first part more easily, right? Because the positive number A is this percentage of the sum of the positive numbers B and C. So again, just be consistent. B is 83, C is 100. So the sum is 183, right? So it's really just this part here. Let me just really highlight it. That, that matters to me now. This is it. This is all I have to worry about. So A is 2,241% of the sum of uh, or <laughs> of 183, right? So I don't even need the sum part. The key word in here is the of, because there are two open formulas and uh, we don't really have a percent increase here. We just have a percentage of something. This is a very traditional percentage. So I'm gonna use this formula. This is the percent of. There's no percent increase, there's no percent decrease, right? So that's the only reason we use the other formula. So now I gotta think, okay, my percentage is easy. That's 2,241% but we have to write that as a decimal. So that's going to be 22.41, right? So O-P-E-N, right? The E is the equals. So uh, open formula, there we go. So that's this part, right? And remember, if you have trouble, just think about a more normal percent, right? Think about like 50%, right? That would be 0.5. So we would multiply that by 100 to get back to a 50. And that would be the same thing here, right? If we multiplied 22.41 by 100, we would get back to 2,241. So it's consistent with how percentages and decimals work. Now we need to think, okay, what's the original and what is the new? Well, the word of is really helping me out here because A is, which means equals, 2,241% of 183. So 183 is my original. That's the thing that A is based on, right? A only exists from this, this original value 183. So for now, I'm just gonna find A as the new because it's okay if I have a variable now because I'm gonna solve for it. So what is, usual, just use the regular calculator, what is 183 times 22.41? That is 4101.03. A little messy, but that's okay. Um, now we have one more piece of this puzzle, right? What percent of B is A? So it's asking me to kind of flip this around a little bit. But again, we're using that word of, so we're going to use the regular open formula. So now we just got to swap some things out. So what percent of B is A? So the, the P we're going to solve for. And of B, right? So B is again now my original and A is my new value because that's how it's phrased, right? Is just means equals. So that's why we kind of like put the A on that side by itself, the equal side, right? So now we have numbers. We have B is 83. 
we have P that we're gonna solve for, and we have A we found was 4,101.03. So now the way to solve this is to divide, right? So this is the thing with percentages, is we associate them with multiplication, but in this case, we are going to divide, and we are gonna get divided by 83, 49.41, but, be careful, be careful, even with my amazing formulas and, and strategies here, there's this temptation to just get x equals and be done. The one downside of the open formulas is that we're always working with the p as a decimal, not as a percentage, right? Now, that's how you should think about percentages. Yes, we talk about them as in terms of 100, but mathematically, we really only use them as a, as a decimal version, right? So that's true when we're talking about exponential equations, that's true in a lot of these situations. So we gotta convert back. So it just means multiply by 100, and the actual, here I'll use a different symbol, the percent is 4941, and then 0 .03, but it doesn't matter, right? So 4,941, there it is. Um, oh, actually, no, we lost the 0.03, so we're good. So D is the answer. It's a hard question, but it's hard because most people are gonna just get so confused with all the variables that they're, they're gonna, maybe even if they do decent algebra, they could lose track of something and just not even realize it. So the, the key with percentages in general is we always wanna go back to a formula. If we just try to feel our way through it, odds are very high we're gonna make a mistake. I mean, we're at question 18 out of 22 in the hard module, we know they're trying to trick us, so we have to have some sort of formula or process that's gonna really keep us centered so we don't lose numbers and decimals. But more important than that is we we can sense that like the hard part here really is, is not just that we have no formula, but that we have no points. Right, so plug points into equations always gives me ideas of how to make questions easier because I know that that's my main strategy. If I have points and I have equations, I'm just plugging them in. So if I don't have points or I don't have equations, I'm looking for them, I'm trying to generate them. In this case, the equations are generated through my memory. I've memorized these formulas to specifically use as percentages, but the points are generated through uh, creativity, through the um, arithmetize strategy. Right, where if I have val variables that don't seem to matter, where I'm not asked to solve for A, I'm not asked to solve for B or C, they're, they're just placeholders. It's better for my brain if I can get rid of the letters and use numbers, because I can't put letters in a calculator, but I can put numbers in here really easily, and that's exactly what I did. So this became easier to solve in two ways. I had a clear uh, formula I could just plug into, and I had numbers that made it easier to understand that formula and to see how the, the, the values changed as I went through. This is a really great question. I think it's very likely that on your SAT, you are going to get some sort of difficult percentage question, and it'll look different than this, but the solution won't be that different. Try to get back to these formulas, try to make numbers up if you can, and just let the formula do the work for you.